I'm Angela, thank you for joining me. Where flowers bloom, so does hope. And if anything holds hope within them, it's these dear little tulip bulbs. We plant them in our gardens, in window boxes, in plants for the house, and we just wait with anticipation, expectation, optimism, and we wait for them to bloom. That's a time where we're hoping for good, a good outcome. And we always get it, don't we? The bulbs, or any bulbs, tulips, all of the different bulb flowers, they always deliver. So it's a time of hope and optimism. I'm going to start with this, this piece today for the demonstration. And this is a structure based upon a bird's nest. I've made it from foraged birch twigs and there's a little bit of larch as well and some tra um, trails of ivy within it. And inside I've placed this dish, which has chicken wire inside, which is held in place with a little bit of paper covered wire. To start the arrangement, I'm going to put in some foliage. And the first foliage I'm using is this pretty one. It's an acacia. It's in its bud stage at the moment and it's a gorgeous limey lemon colour at the minute. And when the flowers all come out, they'll be bright yellow. And um, it's a, just a real spectacle in the garden. So these are going to be placed in to create my outline. And they will um, create the circular outline that I'm looking for. I'm placing them in around the edge and encouraging them to just come over the edge of the dish. When you're working with chicken wire, you do need to choose some materials that are angled because when you're using foam it's easy to angle the foliage into the foam but with chicken wire you have to just work a little bit harder at, um, at getting the materials to do what you want and so I've chosen this acacia for its arching habit and um, also it's a beautiful texture fluffy texture and um, <clears throat> I like the contrast of the limey green and the grey green foliage against the birch twigs. So that's a contrast in colour and also in texture. So I've placed those round and they've just given me the outline, established the outline to start. The next foliage I'm going to place in is this one here, which is Pittosporum, Pittosporum tenufolium tom thumb. It's a copper coloured foliage and I really enjoy seeing it in the garden. I only have a very small one in my garden, so when I cut it, I have to be really mindful of how much I'm cutting so that I don't decimate the whole thing um, because it's very slow growing and of course when I cut it, that doesn't help. But um, it's a, a beautiful shiny uh, appearance on the leaves and so it adds to the, the uh, mixture of textures within the design. Also, I chose it for its colour to pick up the colour of the birch twigs and draw that into the centre of the arrangement. The next foliage I have is this one. This is the tree heather. It's a gorgeous, really gorgeous lime green colour at the minute. Um, strong woody stems. Um, and um, with this one, I bought this. I can remember when I bought it and who I was with. And so every time I use it, I think of those people and where I was, and I really like that in a plant. It's like when someone gives you cuttings, you, when you use the plant, um, then you think of that person, don't you? And that's really, uh, I love that aspect of sharing plants and cuttings um, and, uh, and that sort of thing. So this is the tree heather, and at the moment it's in the bud stage, so that's the limey green. It does progress to be a white flower, and um, I have to say I'm not as keen on it then. Now is when I really love it. Uh, so I'm placing these in, just snip them off a little bit. And these were quite straight and poker-like, you know, sort of plume-like. So they will not angle like the other foliage. So when you're choosing, or when I was choosing, I chose a variety of different forms and growth habits so that I get that, um, the different range within it. Now onto the flowers and for the first flowers I'm going to use these ones here and these are the Viburnum opulus, uh, the snowball tree, commonly known as snowball tree or Gelder rose. Uh, <clears throat> I've cut it quite short because with this arrangement I want to keep it quite low so that we don't lose the, the distinction of the outline of the um, nest 
and um, I've put them into pairs rather than have them in single flowers I've put them in pairs and just wrapped a little bit of paper tape around the um, stems to keep them together the reason I've done this is to a is to create impact when they go in so instead of singular they're a little bit larger and also it makes them easier to insert when they're when they're together when they're taped together so placing these in um, this is a really fantastic plant when you have it in the garden I would thoroughly recommend it I absolutely adore it when it's in this stage it's a lime green color and it progresses into a white flower um, so hence the snowball name is a big round blobby white flowers uh, when you uh, when the flowers are gone you get this gorgeous autumn foliage and then some plants also have clusters of red berries so it really is a plant that keeps on giving and if you're thinking of planting things in the garden for flower arranging um, I would recommend this top top pick this one uh, viburnum opulus so placing these in and um, they're going right down quite low into the uh, dish and will be supported by the other foliage and it really does pack a punch with its colour and its size and the impact that it creates within there I'm sure you'll agree so they're going in there and then I'm going to add to that now because we are in tulip season I'm going to add to this a real strong colour as a contrast and for that we are in tulip season after all these beautiful tulips this one is called Ronaldo and it's a gorgeous winey wine red burgundy colour and when they open up I do love it when tulips open up and reveal their centre and they're a real, real deep colour in the centre so they're quite moody they're strong coloured they're quite moody but I love that as a contrast to the lime green here and I also like the colour with the birch twigs as well so I'm going to I've done the same again with these I've used them um, in in clusters with the paper paper covered uh, paper tape sorry sometimes when you're working into the chicken wire you have to do a little bit of wriggling <laughs> wriggling to get them in because the chicken wire is um, purposely uh, you know entwined so that you actually um, do it does give support so just um, making sure that we get them right into the water so placing those down you can have twos threes I mean you can use them singly but they are you know they're in this size arrangement they may get a little bit lost um, if you use them in single 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 stems some of them can be shorter towards the edge as you want them to um, reach out so I actually planted tulips for the first time um, this year in my garden I've never never planted tulips before I've got little tater tape narcissi daffodils crocuses snowdrops that sort of thing but I've never had um, tulips so that was really exciting for me I'm not a gardener I'm not really very good at putting things in the garden well I'm good at putting them in I'm not very good at looking after them <laughs> so there we have the uh, purple tulips there as a contrast to the lime greens and the gray greens that we have there the next flower I have is um, this one here this is another bulb flower and this is the gorgeous muscari a little pretty petite uh, blue flower and I adore the colour of this and the foliage for this one comes up really early so when you when you see the foliage coming you think, oh yes yes please hurry up the uh, flowers but of course you do have to be patient and wait for them to um, arrive so the um, again these have been put into little clusters and um, I just need to uh, place them in with two hands using two hands just to support the uh, clusters as they go in and these are just you know another contrasting color it's a bulb flower it gives the spring feeling and you'll just enjoy the color contrast there so the muscari does come in different colors and it will um, you know you have the pale blue you've got dark blue there's a pink one there's white and it's really very very pretty in the garden and it naturalizes so easily 
So you've got, um, you put one, one, you know, a few bulbs in and then they will spread and, and multiply, which is always a good thing, isn't it? It's good value for money. Get back in there, you little tinker. That's it. Okay, so we have muscari and the tulips there placed in. And the next one is a bulb flower. And this one is the most gorgeous, uh, full of character, but so tiny, um, fritillaria. And this fritillaria is a really pretty one. And it's got the beautiful checkered markings, almost like a speckle and a speckle, like a speckled chest on a bird. It reminded me of that. So I put these in with the tape again, and some of them are singles and some of them are in clusters. So we're going to um, put the clusters in first, and I want these to re retain their free-spirited uh, character. And um, so they're not tight, they're just sort of bound at the bottom and then left to do their own thing above that line. And that means that you can get gorgeous curves on them, really very, very pretty flower to add in. And uh, you can, of course, grow these in your garden. Uh, again, they, they come in this colour mainly, but there is a white one as well. And um, really very interesting to watch pop up. So we have these ones here. These are single ones. And they've chosen those for their curves. So I can pop those in as and where I feel like I need a little bit of interest coming up amongst the foliage and the other materials there. So that's the... That's the um, fritillaria. And then lastly, I've got this one here, which is a beautiful flower out of the garden. And this is the flower from the Mahonia plant. Now, what you'll see is, you'll see the gorgeous sprays of flowers there from the Mahonia plant. And I really enjoy these. I mean, they're just, they're just beautiful. But what I've done, you'll notice, is that there's a bare stem here. And I'm afraid to say, or I'm, you know, I feel mean saying that I really don't care for the foliage. Now, it's quite spiky. It does make a statement in the garden, but it's not user friendly. And so therefore, I will, I have snipped all the foliage off to just leave the beautiful flowers on the top. Now, aren't they just like nature's fireworks? So I feel a bit mean really because these flowers, they're so pretty and they have the most delicious scent. So if you don't mind, I'm just gonna have a quick whiff. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist that. The, the scent is beautiful. And um, what I think is, it's a bit like saying, I do feel mean, uh, saying you've got a really pretty face, but the body is awful. So <laughs> that's what I feel like when I'm doing that to these poor Mahonia, but anyway, I'm going to move on regardless and use this um, as a gorgeous sort of um, spray that will come in and it's got, some of them have got in curve movement, some of them have got sort of more uh, uh, other upright movement. And so I'm going to place those in. It's a woody stem. They're going to go in and they're just going to provide a little bit of colour and relief amongst the other flowers there. And the thing with this plant, again, another one for the garden to plant if you're really, you know, looking for plants. When the flowers are finished, you get the gorgeous seed head, you get the berries, they go from pale grey green to dark grey green to like a plummy colour and then dark blue almost. They're so unusual and so attractive and I really absolutely adore them at that stage. I adore it at all stages actually. I'm a bit like Bruce Forsyth saying, you're my favourite. Oh no, actually, you're my favourite. <laughs> but I, I do, I really love these. And so adding these in just gives, brings a little bit of acidity to it as well. Uh, to me, these are all spring colours which you can use together and um, they just look so bright together, harmonious. So that's the Mahonia flowers in there. Now I'm going to use some uh, something just to layer up and this is the, um, tr some trails of passiflora or passion flower. And um, I've taken all the leaves off. And so we just have the bare stems with all the wonderful tendrils in there. Um, and they make such an interesting thing to look at in detail. So this is the sort of design that perhaps the more you look, the more you'll see. 
and I'm cutting these and they can go into the water but they don't have to so the sort of plant that actually will um, sort of plant that's hard to <laughs> hard to control sort of plant that you can put into water and it and it loves it but if you don't have a water source or you it doesn't suit the design you can just lay it in like I'm laying it around the outside edge and it will just dry naturally so it will air dry and I'm mindful that I don't want to um, crush or obliterate anything that I've already got in here. So I'm just using this now to layer up, create a little bit of space in the nest, a bit of a protective aspect, protective uh, function there. So bring that one out. And then we can put, pop that in there and bring it round. So circling round just keeping the nest safe, keeping the contents within safe and making a bit more interest as well from a line point of view and texture and also uh, layering it up from the space point of view too. Last little piece there. There, so that's my offering of a bird's nest. Uh, inspired, a design inspired by a bird's nest. I hope that you like it. You can always make one much smaller with a few twigs out of the garden and just use flowers from the supermarket if you don't have access to lots of flowers in your garden. So um, I hope you've enjoyed that, inspired by the bulb season. As an alternative to the chicken wire design, you could always make a hand-tied design with the same flowers in the same design style. So for this, I've made a much smaller nest with the same materials with the birch, um, birch twigs. And then I've added a handle in so that you can hold it in your hand and, it's, and you can then feed the flowers into it. Um, same flowers, same technique. Some can be clustered, others can be single if you want to. Similar foliage and the passion flower just um, protecting there. So the, the, that can be held. It would make a wonderful bride's bouquet for someone who wants a real lovely natural woodland uh, wedding theme. Uh, or it just sits nicely in a vase, a glass vase. Um, and I've to set it here today, I've got a piece of wood out of the garden. I'm, I'm conscious that perhaps nests would usually be up uh, off the ground. And so I thought if I could try and raise it a little bit, it would be good. But I didn't bring the whole tree in. So I've got a log here and um, I'm just going to set it on there for now. But you can put, there's a hole here which I can put a, a glass container into or a jam jar for the water source. But the setting is moss and lichen, like a ground, uh, ground cover with little bulbs that have been planted in here. And as they mature, they will start to open and they will complement the overall look of the wild bird nest theme. So that's the bird's nest hand tied um, design as an alternative to the chicken wire. A lot of the inspiration I get for my designs is from the natural materials themselves. When you see something, it just sparks something off in your brain, your creative brain, and you can maybe see something con constructed already um, when you see the material. And it's really great when that happens, as it doesn't always happen so easily. But for me, when I saw these lichen branches all over the floor, I was very inspired. I love the textural appearance that it gives. I enjoy the colour, the variety of colours, and also there's moss, uh, moss on the branches, lichen. So there's a lot of different things to look at um, in the construction itself. So I've made the um, framework up with the with the textured branches, and I've sat it onto a uh, like a metal plate here, which has a recess underneath or in the centre of it, and I could fill that with water and you know maybe get a little reservoir there and the materials could go into that but that doesn't hold lots of water so additionally i've added in some test tubes some glass test tubes of different sizes small and large and they're they're chosen to accommodate the different sized stems that i might be using so they've been attached the glass test tubes have been attached with paper covered wire and they're just in various places around the structure and so I'm aiming to um, create something which gives us the real beautiful juxtaposition of the rough textured branches with very 
pretty garden flowers and um, the natural materials. So it's that real contrast that uh, was, was also an inspiration for this. I'm going to start by placing in these beautiful ones. And I've already mentioned the Viburnum opulus. And before when I used them, I used them quite short, but this time they're in their long legged beauty. And um, they're just uh, really elegant. And I love the way they have these lime green stems here and then the, the brown stems, wooden, woody stems of the, of the actual, the main stem. Um, so you get a colour contrast already when you're using them. So they're going to uh, achieve some beautiful, elegant height in here. We've already got the height established with the branches and I'm going to add these in. And sometimes they're in, in tubes, things stay where you want them to and other times they don't. So if they don't, then you can always add in um, or add some paper covered wire, little ties so that you're tying the materials into where you actually want them. I've taken all of the foliage off of the main stem here. There's a little bit here and there left, but I rather like um, the sleek stems uh, clean of foliage. And um, so I've done that. And some of the heads are nodding a little bit and some of them are fairly straight. So it's nice to have, have that variety. So those again mentioned earlier, the um, benefits of having something like this plant in your garden really is, I really will give it, um, you know, a thumbs up for, for one of the examples of things to put in your garden if you're planting up uh, a new garden or even adding to one. So that's the Viburnum opulus that's in there. So that gives us this sort of lofty feeling up here. And that's exactly what I wanted because it opens up the uh, space it, in, in this part here. It gives us an enclosed area within which to work with the other materials now. So the next flower I'm going to put in are these ones here, stocks and the Matthiola incana. Beautiful peach coloured stocks, absolutely uh, gorgeous, very pretty. Um, I really enjoy the colour combination with the lime green of the um, viburnum, uh, really great and quite strong stems these ones and of course you can grow these in the garden really very easily and, um, and we're coming into that season now of course um, so they can be covered. Also you can uh, pick them up in supermarket bunches if you want to as well. Um, maybe in a mixed bunch, maybe you might find them in a mixed bunch. Um, or in, um, on their own, you know, you might find them on their own. It's just different supermarkets vary, don't they? I'm sure I'm not the only one who's been around the flower stands in supermarkets and studied exactly what they're selling and what they're not selling. Um, but um, so stocks again, quite easy to get hold of. So there we have them. And of course, the texture of those is really quite papery um, and a, another delicious scent with that one. Really very beautiful scent. And I really enjoy this particular peach colour variety. The next material I'm going to place in are these. And these are just so, so, so pretty. <laughs> and I really think that the combination of colours that I have here, they remind me of rainbow drops. You know, those little bags of little Rice crispy type things um, that were all different colours. I'm sure they're full of all sorts of preservatives and artificial additives. But anyway, we enjoyed them as kids, didn't we? But they, they remind me of that. And also sherbet. We used to get sherbet, which was all different colours. And we used to dab in um, a piece of licorice and, and um, chew that off. And it was really, you know, it just reminds me of sweet shops. So that is the ranunculus. And I think that these, uh, the, te the texture of these, they're, they're just so, it's just so delicate. And yet they're such, they're actually quite a strong flower, quite a strong stem. And the petals, they remind me of tissue paper, unfurling there, just so, so pretty, the unfurling of the petals there. So giving them a little snip and then they can go in at varying heights. So we're going to bring in a variety of colours now. Just turn that around for you because you'll see the difference there. The apricot there and the sort of pale pink 
um, beautiful, beautiful colours, uh, pastel colours. And of course, the ranunculus do come in a very wide range of colours and they last, really last very well. So if you're thinking of buying them, then you will get a really good vase life out of them. And they're a beautiful one for Easter. Um, you know, yellow ranunculus is very um, popular at Easter. And uh, then you go into the summer and you have all these different colours. So just turning it around. So now we have a contrast in form as well. So we've got the open airy form of the viburnum and then the ranunculus is a little bit more closed up. And then the spike shape of the stocks there. So you can grow the ranunculus in the garden as well. And um, they, I, I believe <laughs> they are very easy to, to grow, but also you can get them in a small pot plant, maybe from a garden centre. And um, sometimes you do see those in a supermarket as well. I'm also using the buds here, which are really a uh, pretty shape actually. And they do come out, they don't come out as vigorous um, as a you know as a big flower but they'll come out in a in a little mini version and for that reason I really like using them um, you know because you get good good long life out of them um, and I put the buds in a separate vase and they will then um, keep keep the, the, the vase going a little bit longer after the main flowers have gone so making sure I'm making sure that I arrange the ranunculus at various heights so they will actually um, create different visual effect at different heights and this could be placed on a table maybe somewhere where you can view it all around uh, it would look nice in the middle of a room or even against a wall although i am making it as an all-round design so you could do that um, and or you could make a structure that was um, just, you know, and arrange the tubes so that they all face one way. So that's not a difficult adjustment to make. You just would make it to suit wherever you want to put it. So that's the ranunculus in there, tuning in with the stocks and then contrasting with the, the um, viburnum. I think the colour combination is really very nice. As somebody I know would say, two pound of cuteness in a one pound bag. <laughs> so they're really so pretty, sugary and cute. Yeah, cute. So these are quite sweet as well. And these are some stems of prunus. And these ones here are just some, these are uh, commercially produced prunus. And it's a very pretty sugary pink color. And I rather like that against the dark brown stems. So just snipping those. And then we can place those in. So these are quite wiry at the moment, but on mass, when they're in, they just give a little bit of line, more of a vertical, stronger line in within the uh, structure and within the flower groupings that we already have. So I keep hiding myself behind the <laughs> behind the structure. So um, like I say, these are these are a very sweet, sugary pink. These ones. And rather enjoyable there. So for me, it's the use of the garden type flowers, which I really enjoy, and um, twinning them and contrasting them with the extra strong mus masculine look of the uh, lichen branches. And I like that, that aspect of them, the, the contrast. So that's the that's the uh, prunus in. And then now I have these ones here. These are just a few little twigs out of the garden. But what you can do is you can add them in and they just give a little bit of wispiness to the design. And you know this um, one is um, it has got a dark brown stem and it's just starting to green up um, on this particular one. And I quite like that to bring the, bring the twigs in from the outside. Once you get them into the warm house, then they start to green up and even flower if, if you uh, if you um, you know want them to. Uh, I put bring in usually I try and bring in some forsythia out of the garden before it's actually out in the garden. Cut it, bring it in, and then let it flower in maybe a week or ten days. Cut it quite tight out in the garden and let it flower indoors. 
And that's really nice to watch, especially ahead of the garden um, varieties being in bloom. So I rather like that. So any of the twigs that you see in bud and you want to bring them on a bit, just cut them and bring them indoors. And then that will just bring them, bring them to fruition a bit, little bit quicker with the warmth of heating um, inside the house. So there we have some wispiness achieved by the small twigs there. So just um, now going to add in something else out of the garden. And that's this one here, which is honeysuckle. And these, these twigs, I absolutely adore the way they're so free spirited with their movement. They remind me of fairies flitting around um, because on one branch they have, it's very young in its uh, maturity at the moment. I'll just pick one out to show you. Um, what you get with um, this one, Lomisera, is the little uh, tufts of greenery here. So it's, to me, it's like Tinkerbell moving around all over the place. I do have a wild imagination. <laughs> so they remind me of fairies in the garden. And um, I've chosen these because we have got some fairly straight lines here and we've got a little bit of curve, but this will give even more movement and rhythm to the design. So <clears throat> just keep it there. And um, we're going to add those in and let them sort of go wherever they want to go. No, not that way. We don't want to go that way. <laughs> I won't let them go where they want to go, actually. Let's change that statement. So we're going to um, place them in and see where they go and see if we like it. And I love that. I love the way it's sort of going up out of the out of the structure. And we can we can achieve that with putting different different pieces in different places. So wiggly wiggly. Beautiful movement. Look at that piece. Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely fab. So where should we put that one? That one can go there. And that draws the eye up and in, which I love. And then one more here. So we do the same thing. And then one more left. Let's pop that one into the middle to draw that colour in. So there we have the uh, Lomisera into the arrangement, giving us a bit more of a free spirited movement within the actual outline and structure. Just a couple of pieces of this one here. I rather like this. It was hanging over the fence um, from my next door neighbour. Well, maybe it was hanging over more once I'd attacked it. Let's put it like that. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> and I'm just going to place those in to the tubes and they will give a little dainty foliage effect. When you're putting the materials into the tubes, you might want to just put a little bit of water in the tube to start with. And then as the materials build up, um, you know, you, it may overflow or it may not be enough. By the time you've finished, you might just then need to add in some more water, which is always, um, you know, good to keep an eye on it for maintenance so that the materials don't go uh, without water. Um, let's just sort of hook that up and just bring it down. So we have a, a draping aspect there and I quite like that too. You know, lots of different movements, exactly as you would get in the garden. The last things I'm going to place in here are a really interesting flower. They come as a house plant. They don't grow in this country, in the UK, in the garden. Uh, they, you can get them as a, as a house plant and they're an orchid. And they are these orchids here, which are really very beautiful. And they are called Paphiopedilum orchids or slipper orchids. And uh, they're really such an interesting flower with really um, interesting markings. Um, and uh, quite a lot of character to them, but all they're all very different colours. So that one there has a bit more of a burgundy peachy colour in it. And then this one here is similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place those. If I was arranging it as a front facing design, then this would be, I would place these towards the front. So let's choose a side where I think that they will, they will fit in. So let's go in here because these would be a choice flower. So I would cut them and make sure that they're seen. They're not to be sort of put in somewhere where you can't really see them very well. And um, I just think that they're absolutely gorgeous. They would make a change from the pot plants that you can get orchids. You can get Cymbidium orchid 
in a pot plant. You can get uh, Phalaenopsis orchids as a pot plant. Um, and then this one, more, a bit more unusual, but um, you do see them in garden centres. So that's a really nice um, change for something very, very different um, to, to see in your flower designs. So I have chosen those for you. This is my uh, take on the summer garden, giving us hope, giving us something to look forward to. May won't be long and we'll be in the throes of summer. So there are the Pathiopedilum orchids there, taking centre stage into, in this arrangement based on the juxtaposition of the rough and the pretty. Hope you've enjoyed watching them. Thank you for joining me. And don't forget, where flowers bloom, so does hope.